Hello everyone, and welcome to Blender Savage. So today we'll use uh, height maps to create uh, the Grand Canyon. We'll get a height map of the uh, Grand Canyon, we'll bring it into Blender, and then we'll uh, transform mesh into the Grand Canyon. Uh, if you're wondering what height maps are, these are height maps here. You can perform a Google image search for height maps, get these black and white pictures, and some of them here are already 3D models. Uh, so a height map is a black and white picture where each uh, pixel has a different value. Uh, the darker the pixel, the lower the value. That means it's going to be lower on the mesh. Uh, the higher the value of the pixel, the lighter the color. That's going to be white. That's going to be the high point of the mesh. So, for instance, here in this height map, this here will be a creek or a canyon, and these will be the high points, the white area here of uh, whatever this is a height map of. You can also use this for uh, for making um, other detailed things such as um, textures. Mostly, it looks like uh, Google Images will mostly give you things for um, landscapes. You can use them for other things as well. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is, but you get a picture of uh, this in black and white, and you get the highs and lows there. All right. Uh, so for this activity, we are going to go to website, terrain.party. This website right here, terrain.party. Just type in uh, terrain.party into your web browser. And um, there's no .com, just terrain.party. And I think it's a free website. And when you first uh, load the page, you get this right here. And that's, um, you get the height map here for Tampere, Tampere, Tempere, Finland, I think. Not sure, but somewhere in Scandinavia, you can zoom out. See? So we're going to get the Grand Canyon. So I just zoomed out there. I spun the wheel to zoom in and out. And I'm going to go over here to United States. You will USA all day, every day. All right, I know the Grand Canyon's uh, directly east of Las Vegas, so I'm going to zoom into that. All right, there it is, Grand Canyon National Park. I'm going to zoom into that right there. Cool, I want this area right here. So zoom into a part of the Grand Canyon that you want to sample. Here's Grand Canyon National Park. Here's the Colorado River, which formed the Grand Canyon over a few million years. You know, it didn't take too long. I'm going to zoom in somewhere there. I'm going to zoom in right here with this uh, weird shape right here on the river. All right. Once you uh, zoom and center the area that you want to sample, that's what we're doing right now. By zooming and center it, we will sample that area. I'm going to go up here in the upper right-hand corner. Right now, my sample size is 18 kilometers. I'm going to hit the plus sign right here in the upper right-hand corner. Until I get up to 50, I want to sample more. I'll sample, I'll sample a bigger area. So I'm going to go up to 50. Oh, there you go. 50 is good. All right. And once I increase the size of my grid, that's actually that blue grid that's over there. We can try moving it around, but this is an easier technique. Now I'm going to hit the cloud button here. That's the download button or export. I'm going to export this data here into a PNG or JPEG file. So I'm going to click on that. Uh, Terrain Party says, the map you're looking at is really far from the selected area, which was over there in Finland. Would you like to select the center of the map? Yes, that's what, that's what we want to do. Okay. All right, just going to give it a name. Name it something descriptive. Grand Canyon Hype Map. All right, I hope I spelled height correctly. I'm not sure. And I'm going to hit OK. Cool. So this blue grid here, there is a zoom out. Boom. So that's the area there that I'm sampling. It's downloading it. Cool. There it is down there in the uh, lower, lower left hand corner of my uh, Google Chrome browser. There's a shortcut for me there. If not, maybe it probably went to your downloads folder. Uh, it comes in a zip folder, so, have to, so we have to extract this. Here's a shortcut for that zip folder. I'm going to left click it to open it up. Here it is. Here's the files that I will use. I cannot use them if they're compressed. If they're in a zip folder, so I need to decompress them or extract them. So I'm going to click on Extract here. And I'm going to change the extension here to Desktop. That way I can easily find it. So right now, if I were to um, de extract it, it's going to go to the Downloads folder. But it's easier for me to find it from Blender if I just extract it to the Desktop. So after my username here, uh, there's, a, there's a backslash, then a D. I'm just going to delete everything after the D and add an E. There we go. Desktop. Select Desktop there. Cool. So now the destination, the path for it is desktop. I'm going to click extract. And it will extract to the desktop. And it's going to give me another window in a bit. Or maybe not. Now I'm going to close this one out here. I'm going to go over to Blender. Here we are in Blender. So uh, first things first, delete the cube. Execute delete key. I'll buy cube. Select delete there. All right. Now I'm going to bring in something a little different. I'm going to hit Shift A to bring up the ad menu. Shift A. Remember, have your mouse cursor inside the 3D view window for the shortcuts to work inside the 3D view uh, viewport. Shift A, Mesh, and select Grid. I'm going to go with Grid right here. 
Cool, there's a grid right there. I'm not gonna, don't go to edit mode, but I can show you here in edit mode, there's, see it's a grid. So I'm gonna keep it here in object mode. Oops, I needed a menu that was down here, it's gone. So let me delete my cube and bring it back. Shift A, mesh, grid. All right, so as soon as you bring in the grid, you get a menu down here that says add grid, you're gonna left click it. If you lost that menu, go ahead and delete your grid and then bring it back. I'm gonna change the subdivisions here to 513 for the X and the Y, 513. 513 and then it'll give me more subdivisions if uh, after you do that a blender starts to slow down or crash try a smaller number but the higher the number the more details uh, you'll get of your Grand Canyon terrain height map but you don't want to go too high depending on your computer power if you have a, a gaming computer or a strong graphics card then go for it but I would recommend staying at, at about 500 all right I'm gonna tuck that away I'm gonna go over here the modifier tool right here on the properties panel remember this section here is called the properties panel a modifier tool is this blue wrench click on the blue wrench cool i go to add modifier and i am going to choose displace displace all right there displace uh, your place but my place displace and then there's an icon right here see it looks like just a properties uh, panel looks like two pills two capsules you're going to click on that and then click on you now it takes you to the texture menu, but we had to go to displace modifier first before we, uh, before directly going to texture. We're going to go to modifier first, displace modifier. This is texture inside of displace modifier there. Now I'm going to go to open. And I'm going to click on desktop here. That's where I saved it. Desktop. Where is my Grand Canyon height map? Uh, here they are. Grand Canyon uh, height map. I'm going to go with this one here, merge, PNG files. Double click that one. There it is, bam. You zoom into it, look at that. Looks really scary. Looks like um, the entrance to a super villain hideout. It's like, who lives there? All right, so we're gonna fix that right now. We're gonna go over here back into the texture menu. And you're gonna change the color space here from sRGB to linear. There we go. Looks uh, a little better, sort of, sort of, right? <laughs> So we'll continue fixing that up. So we're gonna go back over to the modifier. There we go. And the strength right here, you wanna bring that down. You wanna bring that way down. Bring it down to a number between 0.1 and 0.3. See if I type in 0.1, enter. There we go, see it's a lot flatter, looks a little more realistic. Or maybe too flat. Let's try 0.3. See there's 0.3, looks a little neater. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna try 0.2 on this one. There we go, 0.2. You can try 0.15, 0.11. So play around with it with to see what whatever you like best. So we don't want that big giant one like this. The Grand Canyon doesn't look like that. That's a little too steep. So we wanna bring it down to a value of a 0.3 or lower. Uh, not too low, not below 0.1. Let me try 0.15. That's not bad. I'm gonna go with 0.18, see what I get there. Oh, let's see, 0.18. Unsuspected, not sure what that is. Let me try 0.2, enter. All right. So now I got my height map there. It was kind of rough. Let me just smooth it out. I'm gonna right click it and select shade smooth. There we go. See, it looks a lot smoother, a lot neater. And um, once you're done, if you're completely satisfied with the appearance of your mesh here, we'll color it later, you're going to hit apply. Once you hit apply, uh, you're pretty much committing to it. You're going to do it uh, as long as you didn't do, commit too many steps uh, after that. But um, if you want to see this view that I'm doing here, hold down the middle mouse button. And move your mouse as you hold down the middle mouse button. Not spin it, because if you spin it, just zoom in and out. But if you push it down, hold it down, then you can rotate your view around it as you hold on, if you, as you move your mouse. So if you like this view here, go ahead and hit apply. Cool, there we go, so I'm committing to that. Now for the color, coloring, I'm gonna go up here to the workspaces, select shading, shading. Go with shading. There we go, there it is down there, let me zoom into it. Cool, or I can have my mouse in here, I'm gonna hit the decimal key to center it, there we go. Zoom into it some more, cool, there we go. All right, uh, I wanna add some material to it, but I wanna have a gradient, so I get all the different colors of the Grand Canyon. If you look at the Grand Canyon, it seems to have a, gradi a gradient of some sort, right? 
<clears throat> See, cool. Look at all these different colors on the Grand Canyon. You got some greens, some oranges, all kinds of colors. So I want to try to replicate that. I want to try to mimic this into Blender. So I'm going to go down here inside the, uh, the shader menu, the shader uh, editor. Click on you. Cool. There we go. Now I got this, uh, these two nodes here. I'm going to get rid of this one here on the left side, the principal BSCF. I want to leave this one here. I want to leave material output there. So I'm going to left click on principal BSCF. Just left click it. Then delete. There we go. Cool. So there's nothing there. So that's why it goes black. Now I'm going to bring in a few node shaders. First, I'm going to bring in the diffuse BSCF, shift A. I'm going to click search. And I'm going to search for it, DI. There we go. That's the option right there. Left click it. And once you bring it in, it's selected. And I'm going to move it over here to the left of material output. Then left click to drop it. Cool. I can connect these two green nodes here, the BSCF to surface. There we go. So now it's this color here, the white color there. I'm going to bring in more things. I'm going to pan my view here. To do that, I'm going to hold down the middle mouse button and move it over to the right. Now bring in more node shaders. So Shift A brings up the Add menu and click inside Search. And I'm going to search for Color Ramp. Color Ramp. There it is. Left click. Move the mouse over here. Left click. Bam. And connect yellow to yellow there. Color to color. And this is my Color Ramp, which I'll use to create the gradient later. Now Shift A. Search. I'm going to bring in a Separate XYZ. That way I can tell it. Uh, what direction I want their gradient to travel on. I want along the z-axis. I'm going to connect the z there. Make sure it's a z. So you get the horizontal, the get the layers of the um, of the colors here horizontally stacked. Now I'm going to bring in mapping. Shift A, search, mapping. There it is. Left click there. Connect these two here. Hold on, left mouse button and drag across. And with this, I can change the location, rotation, and scale of the, all the different layers of the gradient. Shift A, search. And it's going to be texture, coordinate. Left click that one, put it right there, left click. And then generate to vector there. I'm honestly not sure what this one's for, but I know we need that one there. See, we, before we didn't have it, this was all black, and now it's white. See, it kind of looks like snow. So if you like, you can try to make a glacier. A glacier. There you go. Maybe this whole place is just covered in sand. All right. So now to color this, I'm going to go down here to color wrap. I'm going to zoom into it. Spin the wheel. And then hold on the middle mouse button so I can drag. And I'm going to start with the lowest value here, which is the one on the left. That's the lowest color there. So you can see there it's darker. And the one on the right is lighter. So that's the surface there. And this is the bottom there. So I'm going to click inside that tab right there. It's that little square. And then it selects it for me down there. If I click inside the other, the other tab there, the little swab, see so it gives me that color there. All right, I'm going to go back to black over here. Click inside the black bar at the bottom. Boom, color wheel. I want to make the bottom a blue color, so it represents water. Uh, but everything is black. It's because the value is all the way down, so I need to bring this up. See, there we go. There's our color wheel. It's down here. Can't really see the colors, right? So I need to bring the value up somewhere in the middle. And I'll go with the bluish color. Uh, there we go. So it, uh, it is kind of high. See, so it has to travel all that. See, I can move it around, make of it, make more of that blue. Let me pull it back. So I'm just holding on the left mouse button on it. I'm going to bring another color here. I'm going to bring in a dark brown. So I'm going to hit the plus sign there. Cool. There's mother swab. It's going to move it over to the left. Click inside the color, the color bar at the bottom. And I'm going to make this brownish. Let's see, there we go. Bring this down here. Get a darker brown. Bring down the value. Let's see, put some red in there maybe. There we go, release the mouse. Cool, see, so now I got that there. And I'm going to make the, the top part a yellowish color. Like a yellow-brown. Oh, that's good, I like that. Plus sign, bring in more swabs. There's another one. And let me keep making colors. Let me bring that one up there, down there. Let me bring in some blue or some green. I'll make this one green here. And like a dark green, and I'll put other colors right next to it to try to contrast uh, for it so it doesn't look uh, too wide. Just make it like a like a strip of green there. Let's see. There you go. And I'll just keep doing this. Let me bring in one more in here. Make that darker. All right, so there you have it. 
That looks so good. Can you to me? All right. So if you want to make the uh, the background here, which was which is what we'll do next. First, you want to do is create a good uh, scene, a good view for your camera. So, what angle do you want for your camera? Let's see. It's zero for the number pad right now. That's what my camera sees there. But I don't want that view. It's too far away. I want to get something closer. Let me zoom in there. Hold down the middle mouse button, spin the wheel, and let me get something like uh, that. Looks, that looks good right there. So, if I like this view here, I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hold down Control, Alternate, and zero on the number pad. There we go. Let me zoom out. I think I shifted my camera over here to this view. There we go. Maybe want to go back a little bit more. So I'm at seven for top view. I'm going to select my cam camera there. Chief for grab and just pull it back. Left click there. See where for camera view again. And it's too far away. Let me bring it in some more. Chief for grab. There we go. Zero for camera view. Cool. I like that right there. I like that view. I want to color the, the sun here. So what I'm going to do is uh, switch over here to rendered. I'm going to click on this button right there, the bubble. And the viewport shader, there we go, that's what it will look like in the render view. Also, access render, you get the Z key and select rendered. Make sure your mouse is in the top uh, menu here. All right, now I want to change the, the this, this environment out here, the background. I'm going to click on my landscape and I'm going to use some of these nodes so I can color the background. So I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to drag select these four on the left there, just the four on the left. The drag select just hover over one of the corners around the uh, four uh, editors there. Imagine a, a dotted box, imaginary box around these four. Hold down the left mouse button and then drag across to make sure only those four are inside your box. There we go, now these four are selected. I can tell because I have this little glow around them. I got this uh, orange red glow here and a white glow there. Now I'm gonna copy them, Control C copy. There we go, Control C. Now I'm gonna go over here where it says object. I click on object and switch over to world so I can use the no shaders for my world. So go to world. There we go. I want to paste them over here on this side. So here's the, uh, the, the, the shaders for the world. Control V, V for Victor to paste. There we go, move it over to the left. Oh, there we go. There we go. I just held on left mouse button and drag. Now I'm gonna connect these right here, color ramp to background there. Hold on left mouse button and drag across. Cool. There's my sky color there. Let me zoom out. See there's the other colors there in the layer. That's the bottom there. So I want to shift this around. So I'm going to go here to texture. See that Z right there on the location? And the sorry, I'm gonna go over here to mapping, the mapping shader. Look for location, go down there to the Z, click in there, type in 0.1, enter, it'll shift it down a little bit. See, I can also type in 0.15 and shift it, shift it down a little bit, shift it down a little bit. All right, so I got the Z there. Uh, I don't like this setup here. So I'm gonna change that. I don't like those colors there. I want different colors. So I'm gonna click on the chevron right here. You know, let me just zoom into it. There we go. Click on the chevron and select reset color ramp. It's going to get rid of all that. There we go. And it's just from a background here because I already got this one done. And this was the, the copy. And I want it to be kind of blurry. So I'm going to go here linear, change it to B spline. If you want these to be a little more blurry, not uh, you don't want the sharp contrast, you can always go back over here to object and just change that to, to B spline there. And uh, they won't look as sharp. Then here, all right, back to world. All right, so this is the, the shader for my world. See world output, background. And I'm just gonna create uh, sunset colors here or sunrise colors, a little black. Black bar at the bottom here, the color bar. Bring up the value and it makes like a bright yellow color. And go all the way up. Is that bright enough? Here we go. And then this one's gonna be the, uh, the darkest area. So I'm gonna go with black on that one or dark purple. There we go. And plus sign here. Bring in other ones in there. And I have all the colors there of sunsets. Go with an orange color. A bright orange. There we go. Bring that over. Cool. Bring in some more colors. And move this one over this way. Maybe I'll make that one pink. Nice sunset color. There we go. I like the look of that. You move more and more to the left. There we go. There we go. Bring this one in some more. Cool, I actually like that right there. I can bring in more colors. I can bring in a red or an orange. It's so whatever colors you guys want. It's your project. There's a red, cool, I like that red in there too. It's kind of off, so I can bring that down as well right here. Change it to 0.2, see what I get now. 
uh, too low. Let me try 0.17. There we go. So I got them there in there. Cool. All right. So now I'm going to change the settings of the sun, the lamp light, the light source. I'm going to go over here and select light. There's light right there. And I'll need the lamp data, lamp data right there. And I'm going to change this to a sun. There you go, super bright. I'm going to bring down the value of the sun. The strength right here, it's uh, 1,000 watts. Let me bring that down to 200. There we go. Now it's not as bright. I want to change the angle of it. So I'm at 7 for top view. Reposition it. Where's my light? Oh, there it is. G for grab. Put it over here on the opposite end of the camera because we have a sunset. Left click there. It's pointing that way. I wanted to point this way. So I'm at R for rotate. And move the mouse. Point it at the camera there. Left click. Zero for camera view. See how that looks? Looking better. Still too bright. So one for front view, it's way up there. So I'm a G for grab and bring it down where the sun sun would be if it was setting around there. Still pointing down, so R for rotate. Let me bring that up. Cool. Let me see zero for camera view. Still too bright. Actually looks pretty cool. I can leave it like that. I can bring it down some more here from camera view. I can hit G and then Z. I can move my mouse down. I click there. Not that it make too much of a difference. This is looking really sweet there. Cool. All right. And before I render this out, I want to add a couple things in there. So I'm going to go over here to render, activate ambient occlusion, and activate bloom. There we go. See? So now you got some of that from the sun there. A little mist. All right. I'm going to hit F12. And I'll get a picture here of my Grand Canyon and a sunset. It's going to take a while to load because of the um, ambient occlusion and, and the bloom. There you go, and you're done. Just use this model the Grand Canyon. How fast was that? Easy, right? If not, you can always uh, ask, in the, ask, uh, ask in the comments or ask me in the class if you have any trouble uh, following any of the steps there. Uh, thank you for watching. Have an awesome day.